So in previous videos, we talked about cyclin D and how cyclin D is regulated in cells. Uh, when cells are in G1, typically cyclin D levels are very low, allowing the CDK4 and 6 kinase to not be active because its partner's not there. And when cells be get a signal to grow, for example, being exposed to growth factors, that will lead to an increase in the production of cyclin D. And we talked about that in the previous video about how uh, cyclin D is regulated at the transcriptional level. And increasing levels of cyclin D will increase the activity of CDK4-6 kinase. But what does that kinase do? So we're going to introduce that in this video. We're going to talk about how this kinase, CDK4 and 6, pushes cell past the restriction point, telling the cells to go into S phase and through the cell cycle. So we're going to introduce a lot of proteins in this video and a lot of interactions between these proteins and some genes. So there's a lot to keep track of in this video. First thing we're going to introduce is cyclin E. So cyclin E is one of the cyclin family of proteins. Uh, so it's, it's, pro it's a protein whose levels cycle, right? So it, it's low and then it increases, and we're going to see how that happens. And what do cyclins do? What's their function? Well, remember, they just bind cyclin-dependent kinases, and that binding helps activate them. So we're going to see a CDK called CDK2, which is the binding partner for cyclin E. So we're going to introduce those two. We're also going to talk a lot about transcription factors. And in this video, we're talking about the transcription factors E2F and DP. So, and there are many different E2Fs in the cell. There's E2F1, E2F2, and there are many, I think there are up to at least eight E2Fs, and then there's DP1 and DP2. We're just talking about, in general, E2F and DP. They are transcription factors, they form heterodimers, and we will see which genes they bind to the promoter of and which genes they turn on. The last thing we're going to talk about, the last major protein we're going to talk about in this video, is the retinoblastoma protein, uh, RB. Now, RB is not a transcription factor. It doesn't promote transcription. It is a transcription repressor. When it's active, it represses transcription. So transcription factors, typically we talk about them promoting transcription. RB is a transcription repressor. And it's a major tumor suppressor gene. So we'll see that it's actually dysregulated in many human cancers. But these are the few proteins we need to introduce to talk about cell cycle progression. So first, let's go and talk about cyclin E. So cyclin E, that's the name of the protein, it's coded for by a gene called CCNE1. And so I've drawn the gene out there, and I've drawn the promoter. And again, it's a cyclin, so its levels must be low and then increase. So how do we regulate the expression level of a protein? Well, we can regulate it at the gene level. So what regulates the transcription of cyclin E? Well, uh, E2F and DP, those transcription factors can bind the promoter of cyclin E, the CCNE1 gene, and turn on the gene and produce cyclin E protein. That's great. But this tra transcription complex, uh, the transcription factors can be bound by the RB protein. So the RB protein physically binds the E2F and DP proteins. And when RB is present in this complex at the promoter, it represses transcription. So even though there are transcription factors there that would promote transcription, those transcription factors are overruled by the RB transcriptional repressor. So when cells are in G1, this is what the state of the cyclin E promoter looks like. So, um, and we'll see shortly that CDK4 and 6, which we introduced in previous videos, which is the binding partner of cyclin D, CDK4 and CDK6, right, cyclin-dependent kinase, that kinase is going to phosphorylate RB and affect its activity. But in cells that are in G1, CDK4 and 6 are missing their binding partner, cyclin D. So in that case, CDK4 and 6, even if it were present, would not be active. Right? The kinase is not active. And so if CDK4 and 6 are inactive, then RB is not being phosphorylated. So and as I said, the substrate for CDK4 and 6 is RB. It will phosphorylate RB, but not in this situation because cyclin D is not here. So if RB is not phosphorylated, it is in an active state. And again, what does that mean, an active state? RB 
is a transcriptional repressor. When it is active, it is actively repressing transcription of cyclin E. Okay, we've introduced a number of things here. Um, so cyclin E gene, not transcribed. Cyclin E protein, not made. Levels low. So now let's talk about what happens when cells are told to go through the cell cycle. So as we covered in previous videos, cyclin D levels rise uh, upon uh, cells being stimulated with growth factors, for example, or getting other extracellular signals that leads to the production of cyclin D. Cyclin D levels rise. And when cyclin D levels rise, cyclin D joins forces with CDK4 and CDK6, and this kinase becomes active. What does this kinase do? It phosphorylates its substrates, and one of its substrates is the RB protein. Now, RB, when it becomes phosphorylated, um, RB actually has many residues that it can be phosphorylated on, um, over a dozen. And so we actually talk about RB being phosphorylated a little bit, or a lot, or none, right? So initially, there was no BRB phosphorylation. Now there's a little bit of phosphorylation on RB, hypophosphorylation. And so what does phosphorylating RB do? Well, it starts to make it inactive. So it becomes slightly inactive. And when RB becomes inactive, what do you think is going to happen, right? RB is a repressor. If you inactivate a repressor, it's not going to repress as well. So once RB gets phosphorylated enough to be slightly inactive, that's going to allow E2F and DP to function because uh, RB is not repressing as much. So if E2F and DP1 can now turn on cyclin E gene, we're going to make some cyclin E. So the function of cyclin D was to help make cyclin E. How? By, by activating CDK4 and 6 to phosphorylate RB, which then allows for the production of cyclin E. So that's a main function of cyclin D to help make cyclin E through this process. Well, now that we have cyclin E, what's cyclin E going to do? Well, what do all cyclins do? Cyclins bind cyclin-dependent kinases and activate them. So cyclin E will bind CDK2 and activate CDK2. So CDK2 can now phosphorylate its substrate. What's its substrate? I'm going to tell you. Its substrate is RB. So now CDK2 is going to pile on and phosphorylate RB. What happens when RB is phosphorylated? It becomes inactive. More phosphorylation, more inactive, which means more cyclin E can be produced, which means more cyclin E being made, the protein, which will join forces with more CDK2, which will phosphorylate more RB. And so what we have here is a loop here. What kind of loop? A positive feedback loop that allows for the hyperphosphorylation of RB. So once RB is phosphorylated enough to start being inactive, allowing for the production of cyclin E, cyclin E product levels go up, which will keep phosphorylating RB and keep inactivating RB. So RB becomes hyperphosphorylated and completely inactive. So this is a classic example of something that's called a positive feedback loop or a feed forward loop. And this is essential for pushing the cell through into S phase because you don't want, you want to commit to S phase. This is basically committing the cell into S phase. You can't go back once you start this loop. You can go back um, before you start phosphorylating RB. Cyclin D levels could rise, but then you can drop them and still stay in G1. But as soon as cyclin D levels rise and you start to phosphorylate RB, you start to make cyclin E, you have committed to the uh, division of the cell. So as we saw in a previous graph, we graphed some of this information. Levels of uh, cyclin D protein, low in G1. Levels of CDK4-6 activity, low in G1. But when cells are exposed to growth factors, um, cyclin D levels can rise through... Uh, the activation of transcription factors that turn on cyclin D, uh, that could trigger the activity of cyclin of CDK4 and 6 to increase. And if that's the case, then um, RB activity, now we can add something else to this graph. What's RB's activity going to um, 
change. It's going to decrease sex activity. Remember, RB is a repressor, and it is, in G1, repressing uh, E2F and DP1. So when it becomes phosphorylated, it starts to decrease its activity. When it decreases its activity, this allows for the production of cyclin E. Now cyclin E levels start to rise. And when cyclin E levels start to rise, that will continue to uh, help inactivate RB uh, by, via phosphorylation with CDK2, which will increase levels of cyclin E, which will decrease levels of RB activation. So this is, uh, in the previous video, we talked about the restriction point or the R point of the cell cycle. This is the point where uh, the cell is committed to going into S phase. So it's the point of no return. Once you get into this positive feedback loop, the cell is committed to going from S phase to G2 to M. Oops, sorry about that. Um, so the function of cyclin D and the function of cyclin E are to help inactivate RB, which is going to allow the cell to go in S phase. There's one more set of genes that we have to talk about that RB and E2F and DP control. So uh, here I'm drawing E2F and DP binding to the promoter of E2F target genes. So E2F and DP um, transcription factors, they can actually bind, they can actually turn on many genes in the cell. We just said uh, CCNE1 and previously, but now let's see some other genes that E2F and DP can turn on. Um, these genes include uh, genes that make the proteins that are involved in DNA synthesis or S phase. And if you recall from either genetics or biochemistry, all the enzymes that are required for DNA replication, things like DNA polymerase, DNA ligase, DNA topoisomerase, the enzymes required to make nucleotides, uh, we classify these as S phase genes. These genes, you don't need these genes unless you're going to go into S phase. So these genes typically aren't turned on in G1. Why would you make these genes if you're not going to be in S phase? So these S phase genes are typically repressed during G1 phase. How are they repressed? RB. So the RB repressor, right, in G1, RB is typically not phosphorylated, which means it is actively repressing not just cyclin E gene, but these so-called S phase genes, or these E2F target genes. So these genes that remain off when the cells are in S phase. I'm sorry, cells in a G1 phase. Now, let's say cells get a signal to grow, a pro-growth signal, growth factors, for example. So what happens to RB? Well, as we just saw previously, RB becomes phosphorylated and becomes inactivated. So it actually detaches from the E2FDP1 complex. What's going to happen to all these target genes? They're going to be turned on. And so this is what gets the cell into S phase, not just the uh, turning on of the cyclin E gene, but that's going to allow for the genes that are actually involved in DNA synthesis, in DNA replication, to be produced. So cells will go through S phase, and now we have all the enzymes that we require to actually replicate the genome. So hopefully you can see how cyclin D drives the production of cyclin E. Cyclin E drives the production of DNA synthesis genes, which will get the cell to actually commence S phase. Before we leave, we're going to talk about cancer mutations. So cancer cells are continually going through the cell cycle. They continue to think, it's time for S phase, let's copy the DNA, let's make more cells, let's copy the DNA, let's make more cells. Um, what drives cells into S phase? So um, we could talk about mutations that lead to high levels of cyclin D. <clears throat> and cyclin D itself is an oncogene. So either you can have mutations in cyclin D, like an amplification of the cyclin D gene, um, or mutations upstream of cyclin D, things that control the transcription factors of cyclin D. Either way, if you have high levels of cyclin D, that is going to tell cells time to go through S phase. And hopefully you understand why, because high levels of cyclin D will lead to high levels of RB phosphorylation, which will lead to S phase genes being turned on eventually. And hopefully you can make those connections. Um, it is also possible that cancer is caused by high levels of cyclin E protein. And so again, 
how would you have high levels of cyclin E? Well, we could just say it has to do with high levels of cyclin D can drive to can drive high levels of cyclin E, or cyclin E can be mutated. In fact, cyclin E is an oncogene. Cyclin, um, oh, that's so right. That's wrong there. Let's fix this. Uh, e. There we go. Um, the cyclin E gene could be mutated, so it could be amplified in human cancers. And there's some human cancers where the cyclin E gene is amplified and the cell is constantly making cyclin E because the gene is amplified. And if the cell is constantly making cyclin E, then RB is going to be constantly phosphorylated and those S phase genes will be constantly turned on. And again, cyclin D and cyclin E will feed into the phosphorylation and inactivation of RB. So those um, pathways can feed into telling cells to go in S phase all the time. There's a final one. I think I gotta move out of the way for this one. You could have mutations in the RB gene itself. So you could have mutations in cyclin D or mutations in cyclin E or mutations in things that regulate them, or let's just cut to the chase and have mutations in RB. So RB, what kind of mutations do you think would happen in RB? Well, is RB an oncogene? Does it promote growth or does it stop growth? RB is a repressor. It's a transcriptional repressor and it holds cells in G1 unless it's phosphorylated and inactivated and then cells go through the cell cycle. So RB actually stops the cell cycle. So RB in fact is a tumor suppressor gene. So RB uh, prevents cells from going through the cell cycle when it is active, which means RB is a tumor suppressor. It is deleted in, most hum in many human cancers. So either the gene is deleted or there are point mutations that cause, for example, a frame shift or a stop codon. Either way, if RB protein is not produced, what is going to happen to those S phase genes? Let me move out of the way here. Those S phase genes are going to be on all the time. And cells will always think it's time to go into S phase. So um, hopefully from this video, you and this was a lot of information in this video, I know that, but hopefully in this video, you can appreciate what the function of cyclin D really is what the function of RB really is, what the function of cyclin E really is, and those cyclin-dependent kinases. Uh, in this video, I talked about them phosphorylating RB. They actually do phosphorylate other things, but we're not gonna talk about them. We're gonna focus mostly on RB phosphorylation. So RB really regulates that G1 to S transition. And what regulates RB? The cyclins, cyclin E and cyclin D through their interaction with cyclin-dependent kinases. So hopefully now you understand when you're reading about uh, cancer and it talks about cyclin D, uh, misregulation, cyclin D overexpression, cyclin E, talks about RB. These are commonly discussed when you're talking about mutations that drive human cancer. So hopefully that was clear enough and thanks for watching.